Thank you for stopping by our channel Dark Destinations. Our mission is to take you on shadowed adventures featuring dark entities and spooky tales of the past and present. Today we will be visiting the Myrtles Plantation. Here at Dark Destinations we encourage our viewers and subscribers to send us your footage with story for a chance to be featured on this channel. Without further delay let's jump into today's paranormal odyssey and see what we find looming in this dark destination. Have you ever felt a cold shiver down your spine when you're all alone, or perhaps felt someone's gaze on you when no one's there? Welcome to the Myrtles Plantation, where such experiences are not just feelings but a terrifying reality. Nestled deep in the heart of St. Francisville, Louisiana, this plantation is reputedly one of America's most haunted houses. Its chilling history, steeped in mystery and tragedy, has given rise to countless tales of ghostly apparitions and eerie occurrences. Over the centuries, the Myrtles Plantation has witnessed bloodshed, heartbreak, and countless untimely deaths, each adding a new layer to its ghostly folklore. Its grandeur hides a dark past and those who dare to step inside often find themselves face to face with its unseen guests. So are you ready to step through the creaking gates of this eerie plantation? Our journey begins in 1796 when General David Bradford, a man on the run, built this plantation. Picture a man, a general no less, embroiled in the throes of rebellion. The Whiskey Rebellion, to be precise. The law hot on his heels, General Bradford sought refuge in the then Spanish-controlled Louisiana, where he laid the foundation for what would become the Myrtles Plantation. This grand estate, nestled amidst the verdant Louisiana landscape, was Bradford's sanctuary, his fortress amidst the chaos. Bradford lived a life of seclusion here, far away from the prying eyes of the authorities. The plantation was his world, his universe even, where he held dominion over everything and everyone. He named it Laurel Grove, a beautiful name for a place with such a dark legacy. Years passed and Bradford's life here in Laurel Grove took on an air of normalcy. He was later pardoned for his part in the rebellion, and his family eventually joined him at the plantation. Now let's fast forward to the next chapter in this tale. Bradford's daughter Sarah married a man named Clark Woodruff. Upon Bradford's death, the plantation was passed on to this couple. Woodruff, a lawyer and planter by trade, was an esteemed figure, a man of reputed integrity in the community. But you know how the saying goes, every man has two faces? Woodruff was no exception. Beneath his veneer of respectability, he harbored dark secrets that would forever tarnish the legacy of the plantation. Woodruff took the reins of the plantation and renamed it the Myrtles, after the beautiful yet toxic myrtle trees that adorned the estate. He and Sarah lived a life of apparent opulence here, their days filled with grandeur and their nights with whispered secrets. And it was under Woodruff's tenure that the plantation bore its first bloody stain. In the heart of this grand plantation, a tale of love, betrayal, and murder was about to unfold. Our story revolves around Chloe, a young woman caught in the chains of slavery, yet who held an aura of resilience and determination. Chloe was more than just a slave to the Woodruff family, she was an object of desire for the head of the household, the man who held the whip and the keys, Mr. Woodruff. Their affair was a clandestine dance, a dangerous game played behind closed doors. But as the saying goes, secrets have a way of revealing themselves, and Chloe's secret was no different. One fateful day, she was caught eavesdropping on Mr. Woodruff's business affairs, her curiosity becoming her downfall. As punishment, Woodruff took a blade to her ear, a brutal act that would forever mark Chloe and fuel her desire for revenge. With bitterness festering in her heart, Chloe devised a plan as cold as the heart of the man who had wronged her. She turned to the only weapon she had access to, poison. With a deadly concoction hidden in a seemingly innocent birthday cake, she exacted her revenge on the Woodruff family. However, her intended target, Mr. Woodruff, was spared the agony as the poison found its way to his wife and children, extinguishing their lives prematurely. The tragic demise of Mrs. Woodruff and her children sent shockwaves through the plantation. The once lively halls were now filled with an eerie silence, the echoes of laughter replaced with whispers of mourning. Chloe's act of revenge had not freed her from her shackles, but rather bound her to a legacy of guilt and remorse. The death of Woodruff's wife and children marked the beginning of a haunting legacy that still echoes through the plantation. Chloe's story is but one thread in the intricate tapestry of the Myrtles Plantation's dark history, a tale that continues to captivate and terrify us to this day. As the years rolled on, the Myrtles Plantation found itself in the center of the bloodiest war on American soil, 
Yes, you guessed it, the civil war. The tranquil peace of this southern estate was shattered, as the tumultuous tides of war washed over it. The plantation wasn't spared the horrors of the conflict. It was seized, not by some spectral apparition, but by the very tangible hands of Union soldiers. Its grandeur was repurposed, its halls transformed from spaces of leisure to a makeshift hospital. Imagine if you will, the grand rooms of the plantation house filled to the brim with the wounded and dying. The air heavy with the sharp sting of antiseptic, the low moans of pain. The once lush carpets, now stained with the lifeblood of countless soldiers. The echoes of their helpless cries, seeped into the very fabric of the plantation, adding another layer to its haunted legacy. It was not just the curse of Chloe that hung over the Myrtle's plantation now, but also the ghosts of the Civil War. The number of deaths was staggering. Young men, barely out of their teens, breathed their last within the plantation's walls. Their spirits, it is said, never left, trapped forever in the limbo between the living and the dead. And so, the Myrtle's plantation continued to be a magnet for the spectral. Each death, each tragedy, seemed to add to its ghostly population. The stories of ghostly soldiers seen wandering the grounds or heard moaning in agony, continue to be told even today. The end of the war did not mean peace for the Myrtle's plantation. Instead, it marked the beginning of a haunting era. An era where the living and the dead seemed to coexist, the veil between their realms thinner than ever. An era where every creak of the floorboards, every whisper of the wind, carried with it a tale of the past, a chilling reminder of the plantation's haunted history. The Myrtle's plantation is not just a house, it's a dwelling for the unseen. Now, consider this. The Myrtle's plantation isn't just steeped in history, it's also drenched in mystery. Over the years, countless visitors and residents have reported inexplicable occurrences, from whispers in the night, to apparitions appearing in broad daylight. Some say it's the most haunted house in America, and who are we to argue? Let's delve into the spectral side of this grand estate. The ghosts of the Myrtle's plantation are not shy, they make their presence known in the most hair-raising ways. Disembodied voices, spectral figures and even full-bodied apparitions have been seen and heard. From the mischievous Chloe to the children who lost their lives tragically young, their spirits are said to linger, tied to the place of their untimely demise. Among the most notorious specters is the ghost of a young woman, believed to be Chloe herself, who appears in the mirror, located in the house. Eerie handprints and ghostly figures are often seen in the reflection, giving anyone who dares to look a glimpse into the otherworldly. Then there's the phantom of a little girl, often seen in the game room. She's been known to ask visitors to play with her before vanishing into thin air. Other apparitions include a man dressed in Civil War attire, and a woman in antebellum clothing seen wandering the grounds. The paranormal activity at the plantation is so intense that it has caught the attention of ghost hunters and paranormal investigators from around the world. They've recorded electronic voice phenomena, captured chilling photographs, and even experienced physical contact. But it's not just the professionals who encounter these spectral inhabitants. Visitors, staff, and even skeptics have reported unexplainable experiences that have left them questioning their beliefs. But the question remains, are these just stories or do the spirits of the past really still roam the halls of the Myrtle's Plantation? The Myrtle's Plantation, a house with a blood-stained history and a chilling legacy. It's a place where echoes of the past linger in every corner. The laughter of children, the whispers of lovers, the cries of the tormented, all etched into the very soul of the house, forever replaying the stories of those who once called this place home. The birth of a dark legacy, a tragic tale, the Civil War and beyond, all culminate in the haunted reputation that this plantation holds today. The specters of Chloe and others, their stories woven into the fabric of the house, remind us that some things can't be erased by time. They remain, haunting reminders of a history that refuses to be forgotten. As we leave the gates of this haunted plantation remember the next time you feel a shiver down your spine, you might not be as alone as you think. Thank you for joining us on this eerie journey into the shadows, we bid you farewell from the depths of darkness. If you've found yourself entangled in the web of horror we've woven, don't escape just yet. Subscribe and brace yourself for more spine-tingling tales. Remember fear has a way of finding you, even in the quietest corners. We encourage you to email your footage and let's keep the fear alive. Until the next haunting encounter, beware of what lurks in the darkness. Stay terrified, and may your haunted encounters be our next story. Until next time, sleep with one eye open, and may your dreams be as unsettling as the stories we share.
Stay haunted, my friends.